Okay, so you have a very well symmetrical proportional breast, which is very important in the sense that um, as good as what you start with, you can get as good or better afterwards. So starting with a nice um, breast to start with is a real advantage because a lot of the women are very asymmetrical or they're sagging a lot. You're not. So you're in a, just a beautiful position for implants. Um, you don't have any stretch marks per se. Your areolas are large enough that one can put the silicone implants in, which is a big advantage as well. So I think that um, the width of your um, breath can accept a fairly good size implant. So I think um, looking at a CD uh, would be you know, appropriate and it will look natural okay. just based on the width of your breasts. Um, the incision will be right around here. Okay. It will be at the edge of the dark and the light area. And, uh, and so that should heal extremely well. Um, let me draw on you um, where we would have, where in preparation for surgery. This is our, our inframemory line, and we want our implant to not go really past here, okay? okay. We don't want to end the armpit. Mm -hmm. But what happens is you want the fullness here, so you don't want it to come out too far here. Okay. So it needs to be, you know, stinnered nicely on your chest. The incision will be right around the areola, which is going to be right around here in a nice thin line again. So the implant should not come past this line. This is the, the base of your breast and the implant should not go lower Okay. in your case. Put that here. This also goes along here. And then if we draw a straight line here, we'll dissect to about right here. Now the muscle is attached right here, so we'll disconnect it right in through here so that it the implant will fit underneath. So the, the muscle comes across here, it attaches all along here, so we'll disconnect it along here. And that's what's, what's uncomfortable after surgery, is the actual muscle that's being cut. Thank you, though. Last time you had anything to eat or drink? Uh, last night at nine o'clock, I had to drink some water. And uh, food at the same time? I ate dinner about seven, seven thirty. Okay. Vital signs look good. Do you have any dentures, partials, m missing loose teeth, glasses, no. contacts? No. I'm going to give you a couple of medications. Okay. And one of them is, this one is clonidine. It's a medication to help control heart rate and blood pressure during surgery and after. And this one is called Bicitra. It's a medication to help stabilize the stomach acids. Um, because you haven't had anything to eat or drink for a while and you won't for a while, mm -hmm. the acids will build up and this is going to help just kind of buffer that for you so okay. you don't wake up with that sour stomach feeling. Okay. So what's going to happen now, um, I have pretty much have you checked in now. 
Dr. Gaynor will be coming in to get you ready for surgery. He's going to start your IV and he'll talk to you about how he's going to take care of you in the OR. Dr. Delgado will come in and he's going to mark you so that you have one more time to talk to him before surgery. Okay. The medications I gave you will not alter your perceptions at all, so okay. you will remember these conversations. When Dr. Delgado is finished, Dr. Gaynor will come back and he and I will do a surgical pause or timeout with you. And what that means is I'm going to ask you your name and what surgery you're having today okay. and what size implants you're having placed. Do you know what surgery you're having today? Yes. What are you having done? Breast augmentation. Great. Bilaterally? Both sides? Yes. We didn't get a chance to speak last night, but you got my phone call. Yes. So, good. I just have a few, I want to ask you a few questions to help get you ready for surgery. Okay. Leah, you are how old? 24. 25 next month. Oh, okay. And have you had surgery before? No. Never? All right. Never. So this is a kind of a exciting, probably scary experience for you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And we'll get to take good care of you. Do you take any medicines on a regular basis? No. Stick out your tongue and say, ah. Ah. Uh, or get your teeth Anything loose, shit with the caps? Mm -hmm. Nope. Sit forward on the top. Okay, hand it way back. Forward, put your chin in your chest, yeah. And side to side. No stiffness here. Just breathe regularly. Good. Okay. Good. All right. Well, what's going to happen is I'm going to put an IV in the back of your hand, this okay. one. Um, I'll give you a little bit of medicine soon. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have you walk to the bathroom and kind of just start out with an empty bladder. Okay. okay. I know you didn't have anything this morning, but you know you're getting a little bit of fluid now. So mm -hmm. you know you'll probably you may have a little bit. If you don't, that's fine. You know, but would you like to start out with an empty bladder? Then we'll walk you into the room. Okay. Just right over here. Lie on the table, and I'll put monitors on. Put a blood pressure cuff on your arm, EKG pads to watch your heartbeat, a little probe on your fingertip to watch your breathing. Okay. And no more shots. All the medicine goes through here. Okay. So no more shots. I'll give you some medicine through here, which will make you go to sleep. Okay. When you're asleep, put a breathing tube in the back of your mouth. Okay. Uh, you won't know down. about it because you'll be asleep. Okay. But when you wake up, Sometimes people have a little bit of a sore throat in the breathing tube. Okay. About a third of the people or so have a little bit of a sore throat. If you do have that, it should go in a day or two. It shouldn't be a long-lasting thing. Okay. okay. I tell everybody there are risks with surgery and risks.